Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to this talk. Uh, I, it appears that my co-maintainer with CNI is also uh, late. So I think the slides of this will be available. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded them yet. So if you go, for those of you who are taking pictures, you'll be able to download the slides. So don't worry about it if you don't want to. Um, uh, the goal today was to talk about half of the time and then have open discussion the other half of the time. This may upset our gentleman with the recording, but we'll try and make it work. Um, but today, in this particular talk, we're just going to do an intro to the CNI project, uh, how it is and how it is a part of and how it's not a part of Kubernetes, the project, since they are, in fact, distinct, and just sort of an introduction to the open source model that we are talking about. So what is the CNI project in this particular community? Um, CNI means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, the CNI project, that is to say, the GitHub organization and the organization that is part of the CNCF, has two major outputs. The first is a document and some Go libraries implementing the specification. Right? The document is a, meta, is a markdown file. It is in GitHub. We accept pull requests to it. It is released on a relatively calm basis. Implementing this specification are a Go library for the runtime, which is to say the caller, and a Go library that is a skeleton for a plugin. So you don't have to use these. This is not necessary to be a CNI plugin. All you need to do is implement the specification. As with most things, uh, sometimes the code is the specification, but technically speaking, the document is authoritative. <laughs> um, CNI also means, or more precisely, the CNI project also maintains a set of base plugins. Uh, these were originally, incidentally, part of the same repository as the specification, but it became clear that that was not necessarily the right choice because they go at different cadences. And while the CNI plugins are official, they're certainly not necessary for use, right? So uh, the set of base plugins are some pretty common interfaces. And again, these plugins don't actually have any Kubernetes-specific logic in it, because CNI is not Kubernetes-specific. Um, plugins form into two general categories. Some of them are basic interface plugins. Some of them are sort of tuning plugins or tweaking plugins that go after the fact. Um, originally, like I said, two different repositories, uh, the same repository. Now they have two different repositories. Uh, the specification, I don't uh, How many of you have read any part of the CNI specification? Raise your hand. Oh, excellent. That's more than I expected. Great. So uh, the specification is a vendor neutral specification, not just for Kubernetes, used by Mesos, Cloud Foundry, Rocket. Um, and all it defines is an execution, flow, execution protocol. Uh, for those of you who have discovered, those of you, who, uh, some of you may have discovered that Go one, up, up until Go 1.10, it wasn't safe to talk to namespaces. It wasn't safe to switch namespaces in a long running Go process. So CNI is and always has been a execution protocol around what environment variables you set and what you send on standard in and standard out. Right? So that is the protocol. Uh, it's really, really, really simple. You can implement a CNI compliant runtime using just like bash and curl, um, or bash and uh, a couple environment variables and piping a file through. Right. Um, that is the spec. It's not gRPC, and we'll talk about why it isn't. Uh, and we can talk about people's feelings about this later in the open discussion. <laughs> um, the base plugins in their hand are a set of common plugins, originally split off of Rocket, that just essentially need a home, right? They're widely used. A lot of other CNI plugins and meta CNI plugins wrap these. There's nothing official about these other than in sort of true open source style, right? Like somebody wrote them, somebody else started using them, and they said, hey, can we put them in your repository? Like, yeah, sure, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> now we're stuck maintaining them. Uh, Brian, come on on stage. Brian Borum is from WeWorks, another one of the uh, CNI maintainers. And I'm late. Hello. Yeah, I got lost too. <laughs> so who is the CNI project? Us two. No, it's uh, five maintainers who are actively maintaining the project. Uh, this is also in the maintainers file. Um, and there's probably 90 or 100 contributors, especially on the plugins side. So how does the project work? Uh, I wish I could say that it was more interesting. It's We meet once a week. We consider pull requests. We discuss stuff. Uh, the spec is actively maintained, but intentionally has a slow cadence, because as we all know, 
bringing everything up to date is difficult. Um, but it does actually have version reconciliation. So the specification says that plugins should be able to handle multiple versions of the specification. And the Go types and the Go library actively have interversion conversion um, utilities. So we've tried to make it possible such that it's always possible to move forward. It's always safe. You can probably use older plugins if you don't necessarily need all the information. Can I just, can yep. I just add? I, um, I want to stress that the uh, there's no kind of billionaire backer to this project. We, you know, we uh, we maintain it essentially in our spare time, and uh, we rely on contributions. So we're really hopeful there's people in the room who can contribute or would like to contribute. Uh, but uh, the one thing that that is kind of disappointing is when people show up and say, "You should do this." Okay. I was like, "Well, okay, maybe I should," but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the list of things I should do is very very long for sure, and um, so I just wanted to stress that. Yeah, for sure, right? We're a pretty chill, pretty small open source project. Um, I think some of the time when there's friction between the community is that people want spec changes really quickly, and spec changes are not easy to do quickly, right? And we can't just do it in Kubernetes. Uh, we can't just we can't just bump things and move. But we can't like uh, move fast and break things with a spec, right? As much as I would love to, uh, I tried that once already. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, on the other hand, the plugins, who are which are used pretty extensively, is a sort of more typical open source project. We release binaries. We have a give or take quarterly release process. Uh, lots and lots of contributors. Lots and lots of pull requests. If you have a really cool plugin that is not Kubernetes specific and we think has general usage, we'll probably be happy to take it into the repository, especially if you commit to maintaining it. Um, like I said, we're only five people. But faster release pre cadence, pretty typical open source sort of library or utility project. So what the heck are we doing, right? I mean, we don't, we like to hang out. We sort of, we meet once a week. We get on Google Hangouts. We talk about feelings and weather and train strikes and these sorts of things. And we do try and make progress with the specification, although it may be slow going. Um, so the big thing we're working on right now in spec 0 0.4 is get. Right. CNI right now has three RPC calls, one of which doesn't really count. The first one is, the one that doesn't count is version, which is used internally to do version manipulation and uh, version negotiation. So it's only got two function calls, which is add and delete. And it turns out that most people, Kubernetes being a strong motivating factor for this, of course, is that we need to get. Uh, do you guys know what Kubernetes does with the result of a CNI add right now? Shout it out if you know. No, it throws it away. <laughs> it throws it away and immediately enters the namespace and does an IP net NS, like do it does an IP IP adder, right? That's not good. Uh, so we probably we realize that this is a, a a missing thing because Kubernetes wants to be able to restart independent of the pod. Kubernetes wants to be able to restart independent of Peter Kubernetes. The kubelet wants to last shorter than a pod, and so the kubelet needs to be able to get the IP address of a running pod, which means that we need to add get. So that's the big thing we're working on right now, and it has way more corner cases than we really expected. Uh, the biggest challenge for get was plugin chaining, because any plugin in a chain can delete, change, remove anything, any sort of IP address. So we wanted to add the ability, we still wanted to maintain the ability for plugins to ma manipulate the state, and so get needed to be sensitive to that. So the solution we came up with for get was something called result caching where when you execute get, the plugin actually gets as its input what it produced for output when it did the add. Now this may seem totally insane, right? Like, well, what's the point of get? Well, first of all, it is useful for the plugin to be able to say, hey, I know you asked me to get this network, but it doesn't exist anymore, so like, null. Uh, is a null is a really great answer to have. Um, also, it might be useful to just say that the network is somehow misconfigured in some way. So get is called get, but what it really is is check. Um, capturing the semantic, however, in a specification is difficult. This PR is not yet merged, so if you have opinions about how this should be written down, I would love for you to take a look at the PR. We're, we intend to merge it in the next couple of weeks, but like, so there's still time for people in this community, people who this spec is going to impact, to contribute to this specification. And this means that CNI runtimes are now responsible for caching their results. Um, but we do it in libcni for you, so it should be OK. We don't expect this to have a really high impact on runtimes. Want to add something? Uh, 
Well, it just that it doesn't have to cache. That's like the default behavior. Uh, if if you have a plugin that, that can fetch the data from an authoritative store, uh, store, then you you don't need to cache it. You don't need to rely on the. We wrote the caching to cover the simple cases. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you have a network that knows the the one true result, then just send it back. Yep. Ah, right. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, result caching also winds up being used, super useful to solve a use case that several members in the community identified. Um, raise your hand if you know what a chained plugin is. Excellent. Cool. So although, Kubernetes, although CNI does not support multi-network, CNI does support plugin chaining, which is an opportunity to have a single configuration file that executes multiple plugins, where plugins 1 through n, starting with 0, so 0 creates the interface, and 1 through n can manipulate the networking state in some way. And a canonical example of these sorts of things might be a sysctl or firewalling or port forwarding. Anything that doesn't really care about how the network is actually created, but just wants to manipulate existing state. And the spec says that for add, you execute plugin A, then B, then C. And B and C are past the result of A. Well, B is past the result of A, C is past the result of B. Generally. It means that C is, whatever C outputs is what the runtime knows exists. And because these specifications, because, because you're going to manipulate an interface, when you're tearing it down, you should do it backwards, right? So when you're doing a delete, you should do C, then B, then A. But the problem is that C and B, if they're stateless, they don't know the IP address that they created. So the spec right now, it makes it really, really, really hard to make actually useful firewalling plugins. So this cache thing, while originally created for get, actually winds up being super, super useful for real time, for real world plugins, for delete as well, right? right. So the, one of the things that I mentioned in my previous talk, uh, I don't want to like repeat myself too, too much, but writing a chain plugin is really easy. You take our scale library, maybe 100 lines of Go. And so for people who are network administrators, and if you can't find a CNI plugin that does what you want, that might be OK, right? You don't need to completely reinvent the wheel. If you want to do traffic tagging or you want to do something totally crazy that is entirely network specific to you, like don't shy away from some Go because it's really easy. Uh, and you only need to write the small amount of code that adds the IP address to the firewall. Um, and then submit it upstream because if you have this need, like chances are other people have this need as well. The goal after 0.4 is to release zero point is to release 1.0. There shouldn't be any new features in 1.0. It should be mostly a cleanup of the spec and sort of a point of no return. We're saying this is the accepted specification. The Kubernetes community is very very bad at declaring anything 1.0, and so we're trying to break the trend. Um, we'll, see. <laughs> we'll see if we get there. <laughs> uh, but. So now, if you want new features in the spec, now is the time to start thinking about them. Because really, we hope by the end of the year to be done with the sort of development cycle, and to be able to declare, like, no, the specification as implemented is more or less what we need. It's fixed. So now is the time to get involved with the project. Yeah, let, uh, let's be clear that we're, we're trying to freeze the spec at 1.0. The, the plugins will continue to iterate as rapidly as, as people contribute to them. The, the no new features doesn't mean uh, uh, in terms of things working in your network, it means in terms of the the CNI spec uh, that it, their orchestrators can call into plugins through. Yeah. Um, one of the things introduced, and in, I didn't put this in the slide, but one of the things introduced in 0 0.3 is dynamic configuration. So a protocol for runtime is to inject dynamic configuration into the into the configuration file, which was previously static. Which means that hopefully we're trying to lessen in plugins dependency on the API server. So you should be able to get a, a container up. Not necessarily in firewall, but you should be able to get a container up without talking to the Kubernetes API server, because we really do want plugins to be as vendor neutral as possible. I'm at the end of my slides. Yeah, get involved. Uh, that's a list. I guess for the specific addresses, go um, Google it or whatever. The, I think the, the addresses are listed on the GitHub exactly repo, right. which is container github.com slash container networking. Mm -hmm. um, you can find all the specific addresses. Uh, I guess most of us hang out on Slack. Uh, Dan, who's an old timer, hangs out on IRC. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> we have a Slack IRC bridge, so you don't have to figure it out. Uh, or come and talk to us here. Uh,
Anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's try and open up the the conversation. What did people come to talk about or hear about or? Just a question because you uh, specifically told us about it uh, just a few minutes ago with the uh, multi interfaces. Yep. Is that in the in the spec why you don't intend to or why it's not supported right now? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe yep. you can. Sure. Right. So CNI will never support multi interfaces in its current implementation. Also, 1.0 will not support multiple interfaces. The CNI was always basically meant to define sort of logically one network or one interface, right? Um, it supports multiple interfaces. Technically, it supports multiple IP ranges. It supports more of, supports arrays of everything you want. But from a logical perspective... Yeah, just do one interface many times. Right. So uh, from a logical perspective, CNI is really about, like a CNI configuration file should define some logical network. Um, and from the original days of Rocket, if you wanted to say connect Rocket to your like storage network and to your uh, front end network, you would say Rocket run dash dash net equals storage comma front end, and you would get two interfaces in the order that you applied, so ETH zero, ETH one, and it was multi like Rocket has had multi networking since day zero. Uh, this didn't make it into Kubernetes, and the way that people solve this right now is by using Multis, which is a CNI plugin that calls other CNI plugins. Oh, that's um, a hack. It is beyond a hack, and there's a multis author in the in the in the there's a multis author somewhere at KubeCon. We had lunch together. He's awesome. He's very smart, and obviously, it's extremely successful, and it's it has a need. Um, but the CNI doesn't need to solve that. Kubernetes needs to solve this, and we're actively working on it, but not as part of the CNI project. Can you tell us a little bit about IPv6 support? So CNI supports IPv6 since about a year ago in terms of all the CNI plugins. The specification doesn't care, right? It's an IP, IP address in the specification is a string. So the specification has effectively always supported IPv6, but that, what good does that do you if no plugins support it? Um, all of the base CNI plug plugins have supported it for about a year or a year and a half. Kubernetes has beta support for IPv6. There was a talk about this that actually had the key dates. I just don't remember them. Kubernetes right now supports beta v6, talk to people at Cisco, uh, because they're the ones who are working on it right now. Dane and Dane. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you want to answer the question? Um, what's, the question? <laughs> what's up with IPv6? <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. It's not dual stack. Yeah, so uh, Kubernetes 1.9 has... Oh, I'm Dane LeBlanc, work for Cisco, been uh, worked on the CNI IPv6 and Kubernetes v6 along with Paul and Rob. Um, yeah, so Kubernetes 1.9 introduced um, IPv6 only to Kubernetes as an alpha. And it's um, and right now we're trying to get to beta. We're just waiting for a CI to, to get merged, a CI, an IPv6 CI. And then um, we're targeting uh, about Kubernetes 1.12 to, to do the dual stack support. So um, and that involves, you know, allowing pods to have multiple IPs and service addresses to have multiple VIPs. Yep. So it's one, about 1 1.12 for dual stack. Yeah. Dual stack is effectively the same problem as multi-network because it means adding arrays to things that previously were single values. And it also means that services need to, in some manner, be topology aware. So it's a lot of work to do, right? Because a lot of these are very unanswered questions. Yeah, so related to that, when you do an add, how do you deal with the multiple addresses? Is it returning a pair or, or so, um, the plugins? Actually, let me just pull up this back, if you don't mind. Um, for CNI, like I said, CNI doesn't support multiple. Like, you're talking about for dual stack? Yeah, so CNI, you can return an array of addresses. And actually, compliant CNI plugins generally tend to return all the addresses, not just for the plugin, but all intermediate addresses. So if you have a gateway address or a bridge address that you've created, you return those as well. You know what? I want me to run CNI. I'm going to do it. I'll create a v6. I'll create a dual stack. Live demo. I didn't even mean to do it. <laughs> Live and unrehearsed. Uh... So the, the, the spec was, in the very early days, single address uh, in the CNI yeah. spec. Oh, you want to make the font bigger? Yeah, you've done it. Right. Uh, but it, like two years ago or thereabouts, the CNI spec was modified to let you return an array 
of uh, addresses, um, and and you know we're not we're not just beating down on Kubernetes here. The point is CNI is a is a orchestrator neutral uh, specification, and and it is used by Rocket, Mesos, um, Cloud Foundry. Uh, you know it it's it is cross um, orchestrator, and. Um, so some of these questions go to CNI, and some of these questions go to Kubernetes, if that's the orchestrator you're using. So I'll just repeat the question. Can you show what gets passed in? Sure. So uh, traditionally, in CNI versions 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, which didn't exist, um, the specification is that you take the CNI configuration on disk, which has two meanings. The CNI configuration on disk has this name here, type, which is the worst named field because it really means plugin binary name. And CNI is expected to decode this JSON, only look at the version and the type, but find a binary on disk in a path with the name P2P in this case, and then execute that binary and pass this entire file on standard in. Right. Kubernetes, what right, he said is you can put a range there. You can put anything you want there. You can put lots of configuration files. The spec merely says that you need to have version, name, and type, and everything else is freeform that will be passed through right through standard in to the plugin. For sure, and the return type also does. Well, it's just, no, see, no, no, yeah. well, one of those invocations regards one interface. Right. If you want two interfaces, you do that twice. Yes. But yeah. It yeah. It well, it's yeah. That's what I, I was trying to say. It it it, ha, it has no need to even talk about multiple interfaces because it talks about one interface. If you need two, do it twice. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you need three, do it three times. It's, <laughs> Well, no, you can create multiple addresses if your plugin supports it. Yes. But logically, I, and in the, in the a single CNI invocation will probably create multiple interfaces, but it, the CNI specification includes as a parameter the name of the one interface that should be created in the container. So logically, one interface in the container should be created, regardless of how many incidental interfaces are created. Yeah, I, I guess we, as maintainers, we get this question a lot, and, and, and we have to, you know, the message is we're, we're not going to do anything because there is no need to do anything in CNI. The, the uh, place that does not support multiple interfaces is Kubernetes. So CNI will always let you call CNI multiple times. If you need multiple interfaces, call it multiple times. End of. So to answer your, your previous question, I just executed this CNI configuration, which defines two ranges for IP allocation, and but is going to create one interface. It's still going to just create ETH0. And this is the response that I got. I got the name. Uh, I got two interfaces returned, one of which is in the container, because the sandbox property is set, and one of which is not in the container. It's the host side of the VETH. But we still return this because it's useful if you're doing something like, say, firewall chaining, where you want to know, you don't care about what the container is, all you want to know is this IP address and the interface that it's going to come through on the host. So that's why we see two interfaces returned, but only one is going to be in the container. And we see two IPs returned, a v4 and a v6. So CNI supports dual stack, and I can even do. And we can see that my. Oh, by the way, IP, as an IP route two, is a container runtime engine. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I just did all of this IP. I just did all this namespace management with IP. Like, anyways. So if I do IP dash n testing means to execute it in the testing namespace, and I have well three because of IPv6. But I have two inter. I have two addresses applied to this interface. Did, did we hit all the points that arose in that discussion? No. Yeah? Okay, next.
Hi. My question about the dynamic configuration. Mm -hmm. Let's say that I have 10 plugins. I set up my own plugin. Yep. But this needs a special variable, let's say. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I cannot modify the container runtime. So Is there a way from user level to uh, annotate some? Not yet, but that's a pretty good idea. The CNI specification has a what is essentially a limited templating language. Not really, but it's essentially a limited templating language where the runtime will replace one variable with another, but the runtime needs to know about these because these variables are defined as part of the specification. Um, the variables right now are things like which ports should be mapped and soon to becoming is what the bandwidth levels are. But they, right now, there doesn't exist a way to do arbitrary substitution for Kubernetes into CNI, but that's a really good idea. So I think you should propose that to SIG Network, and we should get that into Kubernetes. The, there is a PR, actually, uh, which does not do that, uh, but it uh, passes all of the annotations on the pod um, in the JSON. And uh, I guess that's something we would take input on. Um, so the two sides of that argument, like the reason why the PR isn't just merged is um, it's a slippery slope. So, so somebody wants the annotations on the pod, and the next person wants the annotations on the namespace, and the next person wants the annotations on the node, and then we need the name of the AZ, and then we need, you know, the, the, um, you, there's essentially uh, no limit to what you might conceivably want Kubernetes to pass to the CNI plugin. And um, and we don't pass any of that. Well, right now we pass the name of the namespace, the name of the pod. When I say we oh. here, I'm talking about Kubernetes, which I didn't write, so I don't know why I'm saying that. So anyway, Kubernetes passes uh, a few Kubernetes-specific variables, uh, like the namespace and the, and the pod ID. And um, so if you really want extra information, uh, you can hit the Kubernetes API server with those pieces of information and fetch whatever else you wanted. Um, and in fact, almost everybody uh, writing a um, major CNI plugin does that. Uh, that so, being said, we'd really like to be able to get a network up without needing to talk to the API server, because those of us who are naughty enough like us to do self-hosting, if your API server is down and your API server is hosted on your and your, and your control plane is hosted on Kubernetes, like unless you're very careful, you can have a chicken and egg problem. Also, lowering the load is good in general, so it's a tough balance. Yeah, yeah. and so these things are in the air. The, the uh, whether there should be some kind of targeted um, passing in something quite specific that is needed uh, to to fire up a network for a pod. Uh, whether Kubernetes should, uh, you know, just shovel in everything, um, or uh, whether there should be some other mechanism that maybe someone in the room can think up. Right. So please, please get in touch. Yeah, we're uh, we now have dynamic configuration. So the, as they say, the cat is out of the bag, uh, and we're not going to stop anybody from doing it. Uh, and if there's a good cross vendor need, then we'll put it in the spec for sure. The question is, is there a global IPAM, or can you have separate IPAMs for groups of pods? Right now, there is a, right now, there's a global CNI configuration. So effectively, the answer is yes, right? There's a global everything. Actually, CNI is configured by writing a file to disk. So you could theoretically have different configurations per node, but I would recommend against that, because pods can move between nodes like crazy, and it would make you very sad if your pods had like a non-uniform network environment. Um, but there's nothing stopping you with how intelligent your IPAM can be. Uh, so in this particular case, the logic would probably be either someday when multi-network happens or in your IPAM itself. Because your IPAM plugin can make these decisions with reasonable intelligence. Yeah, I IPAM's pluggable. So what it, it does whatever somebody codes it to do. Five minutes left. Anybody want to bring up a really controversial topic? Uh, people are asking why it's not a gRPC API. First of all, because Rocket is it's daemonless. Like Second of all, because of Go and the namespaces. We'll definitely consider uh, making it a gRPC API post 1.0. I think that is a really good direction for the spec to take. But right now, we have enough on our plate, and it works. We'll get to it. 
All right, just one more. Um, so I don't know if this is the right venue to ask these questions, but how do you go about debugging crashing CNI plugins when it's crashing on the node? Right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, with regards to Kubernetes, of course, right? Well, so one of the best things you can do is to deploy your CNI daemon sets using Kubernetes. Um, so if you deploy it as a host network pod as a daemon set, then you have all the visibility that you have into any other daemon set, right? You can do Docker logs if you can't use, you could, you can do, hopefully you can do kubectl logs. If the node is really screwed up, you can do Docker log. Um, Right, so uh, one of the things that we do for our core, this has nothing to do with networking, but at CoreOS, for our core containers, we will bind mount the system journal into our core pods so that they actually log directly through the journal to disk. So we can do journal cuddle. Um, that doesn't scale for all pods, but it is a reasonable solution for system pods, like, like networking daemon sets. I think, honestly, I mean, I, like Kubernetes logging, of course, is unsolved, and we could talk about this all day, and I don't want to get myself in trouble. But just, but, just one point of detail. They, the plugin itself, which is a little binary, uh, gets oh. exact by Kubelet and inherits Kubelet's std out and std error. Yes. Uh, so for most of the simple cases, the first place to look is in the Kubelet log, right. um, yes. where anything the you know a, a, a stack trace or core dumped or whatever, any anything like that, any message like that will will appear in the Kubelet log by dint of the fact that Kubelet exact it. Uh, and it inherited the studded error. Yep. Um, and Kubelet doesn't run in a pod because turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now Kubelet is a chatty thing, but you know, grabs your friend. So. All right, we have three minutes left. Somebody yeah, don't, 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 don't pick the first error message in Kubelet because Kubelet like, runs everything again and again and again. And, right. and so, yeah, start at the bottom or something like that. Yeah. Anyway. Debugging in Kubelet could take. Does it, it doesn't like anything to events or anything useful, though. No. OK. I want to contribute to the CNI support Windows platform. Uh -huh. Excellent. So I have two questions. Yes. Uh, oh. one, one is, how many people uh, are, interested, uh, are interested in supporting Windows? Cool. Raise your hand. No? Yes? Oh. <laughs> well, we know, we know Microsoft. Yes, uh, 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 <laughs> no, well, I'm not a Microsoft employee. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I talked with uh, Microsoft Is engineers. Microsoft in <laughs> Is anyone from Microsoft here? No, okay, good, You're great. Nice. We're safe. <laughs> <laughs> to, Sorry, can I just add? I mean, yeah, we we uh, we are getting tremendous support from Microsoft uh, contributing. Uh, uh, to the project, you know, they 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 made they took out a lot of the Linuxisms. They made the code compile cross-platform. They made the test run cross-platform. Um, so there's there's certainly a commitment to CNI from Microsoft. But but please, we want as many contributors as possible. So do go on. Uh, and uh, my, my question is, uh, I, I, uh, is there no integrated test environment or uh, integrated test? So. The pre uh, request for supporting Windows uh, remain um, not managed. So How can there is Windows unfinished Windows support uh, in true open source style? Somebody opened a pull request and then disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> they like it was a good pull request. We had some feedback. They made some changes and then they just ghosted. <laughs> this is the world we're in. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So CNI, the specification, has no OS dependencies. CNI, the library for the runtime, has no Linuxisms and doesn't care. There are some CNI plugins that have experimental window support that has not yet been merged. There's a PR. It's open. It is welcome to be adopted, and we will absolutely merge it. We need help, especially with doing CNI integration tests for Windows, because none of us are particularly Windows savvy. So I, is there a Travis for Windows? I think it's app bear. I don't know anything about this, right? So that's the big question. Is we're not going to take it if there isn't tests, and we can't run the tests. Yeah. I think we're out of time. So I'd like to thank all of you for coming and listening to us chat. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, come find us on Slack. Come contribute. Uh, happy to have as many contributions as possible.